Hello, I'm Mohsen Jamal and you watch Afghan News. Two assailants who killed 42 people in an attack at a bank in April were hanged to death in Kabul Monday. Officials said the National Directorate of Security said that the two killers who were sentenced to death were hanged at 11 a.m. local time. The Supreme Court announced the death penalties for Zarajam, a Pakistani national, and his Afghan colleague Matiullah last week. One of their comrades was sentenced to 20 years in prison. They were part of a group of Taliban assailants that killed at least 42 people, half of them Afghan security forces lining up to receive their salaries at a bank in eastern Jalalabad city in February. More than 70 others were injured. Six Afghan civilians were killed and six were injured Monday in rocket attacks in a border village between Afghanistan and Pakistan. A senior police official said the 12 rockets landed on a house in the remote Nari district, said General Iwaz Muhammad, the police chief of the Eastern Kunar province. Meanwhile, Mia Hussain, chief of the provincial council, asks the government to prevent such attacks, otherwise the people themselves will react against the Pakistani forces. U.S. Defense Secretary Robert Gates confirmed Sunday that United States officials were involved in preliminary talks with the Taliban to seek a political solution to the Afghan war, but said he didn't expect significant progress for months. Gates also said recent gains on the ground in Afghanistan meant U.S. President Barack Obama would have a lot of room for maneuver. When deciding how many troops to withdraw as he begins a limited U.S. drawdown next month, this comes as President Hamid Karzai announced on Saturday that the United States was holding talks with the Taliban. All the diplomats and officials say talks are at a very early stage. They highlight a growing focus on trying to find a political solution as foreign combat troops prepare to pull out next month. The United States ambassador to Afghanistan, an unusually blunt in personal comments, Sunday responded sharply to President Hamid Karzai's escalating denunciations of American and NATO forces and air force in Afghanistan. After an unbid speech about Afghanistan's future prospects to university students in the western city of Herat, Ambassador Carl W. I. Canberry complained bitterly about American forces being compared to occupiers and being told that they're only hero to here to advance their own interests, suggesting such comments could lead the United States to give up on Afghanistan. Although he did not mention Karzai by name, Iconberry was deferring almost a verbatim to harsh criticisms President Hamid Karzai via Saturday and has expressed on previous occasions. The ambassador's remarks came as he prepares to leave Afghanistan at the end of a grueling two-year posting. At least seven suspected fighters have been killed after U.S. drones fired missiles at a vehicle and a residential compound in the Quorum Tribal Agency in Pakistan's northwest, according to Pakistani officials. Sources said that in the first of Monday's two attacks, a vehicle was hit and two suspected fighters were killed. The vehicle was attacked again but just a few minutes later as the local tribesmen rushed to a nearby residential compound for safety, every second missile was fired, killing another five suspected fighters. The identities of the suspected fighters have not yet been established. Speaking on condition of anonymity, two Pakistan intelligence officials confirmed the attacks. More than 5 million people are believed to have been affected by severe floods in eastern China amid pr predictions of further heavy rains in the coming days. The Chinese government has raised its disaster alert to the highest level as the flooding has caused more than $700 million worth of damage. Heavy rains hit Xinjiang province over the weekend and the level of a river that passes through Langxi city has risen sharply. Zhao Feiyuan, deputy director of the flood control headquarters, said torrential rains have left huge areas of Hubei and Zhejiang provinces underwater with more than 1 million acres of farmland inundated. More than 7,000 homes collapsed or were otherwise damaged and almost 1,000 businesses have been forced to suspend operations. Syrian President Bashar al-Assad has said Syria's Justice Ministry is studying ways to expand an amnesty offer while delivering his third major speech since protests demanding greater freedoms and democratic reforms erupted in mid-March. Speaking at Damascus University on Monday, Assad said that his government was in instituting a process of national dialogue through an authority designated for the purpose, adding that about 100 people from various backgrounds had been invited to take part in the process. Speaking ahead 
of a meeting of European foreign ministers in Luxembourg on Monday. William Hague, the British Foreign Secretary, meanwhile said that his country wanted Assad to respond to legitimate grievances to release prisoners of conscience to open up access to internet and freedom of the media. In another development, Jacob Kellenberger, the president of the International Committee of the Red Cross, is in Damascus for two days of talks to discuss expanding his agency's relief efforts towards Syrian offshores. NATO has acknowledged responsibility for an air strike that killed a number of civilians in Tripoli, the Libyan capital. A statement from the Alliance said that a military missile site was the intended target of a raid on Sunday morning, but one of the weapons did not strike it and may have caused civilian casualties. Oano Langescu, a NATO spokesperson, says NATO's killing of civilians was a sad incident that they deeply regret. Earlier, Libyan officials said a number of civilians were killed in the strike. At a local hospital, reporters were shown three bodies, including a child which government officials were said were people killed in the airstrike. A French embassy convoy in Iraq was hit by a roadside bomb in Baghdad on Monday, wounding at least seven people and underscoring the still shaky security situation in the capital. Local security sources said details about the attack were not clear, but at least seven people were wounded when the convoy was hit in a central part of the city, the sources said. A witness said one of the cars in the convoy was badly damaged, along with two other civilian cars at the scene. Earlier in Shah, district of northern Baghdad, a port car bomb went off, killing a civilian and wounding four others, including two policemen, Ahmad Sabah, a security source said. And that the defense team of the ousted Tunisian President Zain al-Abidin bin Ali, who was to go on trial on Monday, intends to request a postponement, postponement to prepare his defense, according to one of his lawyers. Ben Ali fled to Saudi Arabia on January 14 in the face of a popular uprising against his 23-year rule and is to be tried in absentia by a criminal court in Tunis over a scores of cases against him and his entourage. Ben Ali, the first leader, toppled in a wave of Arab uprisings, faces charges related to theft, drugs and weapons, following the reported discovery of around $27 million in jewels and cash plus drugs and weapons at two palaces outside Tunis. He could face up to 20 years in prison if found guilty of the charges. And that's all for now. Thanks for staying with us.